I'm outside of the sleepy town of Eureka, Utah, in front of a very interesting mine. The story here started in 1917 with a German immigrant by the name of Emil J. Raditz. Now, like most of the shining characters of the West, he came here with a dream, and he tenaciously pursued a little prospect until it turned into a big mine. It took him 10 long years of suffering, but this mine ended up being one of the biggest in the district and produced over $75 million of ore by 1946. And Mr. Raditz didn't stop there. His company invested tens of millions of dollars into Utah's fledging railroads and metals industry. Today, we are going to explore one of the more interesting of those projects. I'm your host, Stuart Burgess, and you're watching Mojave Underground TV. In 1919, the Tindic Standard Mine was running at full steam, producing rich silver ore. You can see behind me, this is where they would load it all up. Unfortunately though, shipping all the ore away for smelting was very expensive, but Mr. Raditz set out to solve that problem. He undertook the construction of a small mill, to be known as the Tintic Standard Reduction Mill, on a hillside near Warm Springs, two miles east of Goshen Township, Utah. The mill was built for $580,000 and was 80% complete by the end of 1920. In 1921, the mill was done and working at full capacity. Sitting up on the cliff like a castle, the mill strikes an imposing view on the random passerby, striking the imagination of weekend adventurers, old and young alike. I know when I was a boy, I spent many hours up here exploring and imagining the lives of the men who worked here. Let's head on up and take a look. We're here at the top of the mill. We're seeing it today exactly as a cartload of ore would have. Let's pretend today like we have some of that ore and see how it would have been processed. This is where the milling began, in the ore bins. Now there are some unique things about this mill. It used the Augustan process, which is quite outdated. In fact, it was outdated in the 1920s. This was the only mill in the United States that used it. You can imagine, there used to be giant rollers here. And what they would do is crush the ore because when it came from the mine, it's too big to process. So they crush it down to a nice small size before it went into the roasters. These are the Holt Dern Roasters. W.C. Madge, while he was constructing the mill, consulted with Theodore P. Holt and George C. Dern to build these unique roasters. Now Holt and Dern were building roasters all over the country at the time in refineries and their technology was quite popular. But here was unique and that they roasted the ore with salt. Once the ore was done in the Holt Dern Roasters, it would come down into these iron boxes where it was moved into these leaching tanks. Now in these leaching tanks, it was soaked in a very strong brine solution. You could imagine all these tanks full of ore. This mill could process 200 tons of ore a day, and that was only half the daily output of the Tintic Standard Mine. Here we are, the silver precipitator. This is where the ore was precipitated with copper. It's one of the final steps in the milling process. Once the ore has gotten to this point, it's been at the mill for almost 140 hours. But recovery rates were fairly high. They recovered 88% of the silver, 60% of the lead, 33% of the copper, and 7% of the gold. By 1925, the grade and composition of the ore at the mine was not adequate to keep the mill running. So, it shut down. The mine continued to operate though, sending the ore to a smelter instead. By the fall, things were pretty quiet around here. No more mention was ever made of the mill again in company reports. I'm sitting on the banks of the beautiful Goshen Warm Springs. These springs sit serenely right below the mill. Now the millwrights found them very useful. Milling ore requires an enormous amount of water. Unfortunately though, the mill left a legacy on the springs. They're full of heavy metals and it'll take years to leach out. Good and bad, success and failure, 
These stories ripple through history and weave the foundation of greatness. Let us learn from these struggles and move forward. This is Mojave Underground TV. Tune in next time.